we study synaptic plasticity in neocortical microcircuits. Synaptic plasticity is thought to underlie learning and memory as well as brain development. During evoked release, action potentials at the presynaptic terminal elicit calcium influx and release of neurotransmitter into the synaptic space. However, neurotransmitter can also be released spontaneously in the absence of an action potential in small quantized amounts. There is growing evidence showing that action potential evoked release and spontaneous release are regulated separately from one another, but precisely how is still unclear. In the textbook view, the postsynaptic NMD receptor is critical for triggering plasticity and information storage. But there have also been numerous reports of mysterious presynaptic NMD receptors with unclear function and debated signaling mechanisms. I'm Christina. Until recently, NMDA receptor functions have been attributed to their canonical ability to conduct calcium at the postsynapse. However, there is increasing evidence for unconventional modes of NMDA receptor signaling and their potential role in synaptic pathology, such as Alzheimer's disease and schizophrenia. In this study, my lab investigated how presynaptic NMDA receptors signal to control neurotransmitter release and neuronal communication. We studied presynaptic NMDA receptors in the mouse visual cortex. Using our custom-made two-photon microscopy and electrophysiology rigs, we studied evoked and spontaneous release in live neurons. We recorded presynaptic NMDA receptor activity in the presence of the specific blocker rho, different magnesium concentrations, and different firing frequencies. We found that for evoked release, presynaptic NMDA receptors upregulate replenishment rates of neurotransmitter-containing vesicles in the presynaptic terminal to indirectly sustain neurotransmission during high-frequency activity. It is sensitive to magnesium and requires high-frequency activity. At low frequencies, presynaptic NMDA receptors regulate spontaneous but not evoked release. Interestingly, presynaptic NMDA receptors regulate spontaneous release in a magnesium insensitive manner, suggesting metabotropic signaling. I'm Jennifer. The distinct frequency dependencies suggested to us that presynaptic NMDA receptors regulate evoked and spontaneous release separately. We probe the differences between spontaneous and evoked release by identifying molecular mediators critical to this differential regulation. RIM1 is a presynaptic protein involved in controlling and anchoring the neurotransmitter release machinery. We genetically deleted RIM1 to see if presynaptic NMDA receptors needed RIM1 to signal. Next, we studied another molecular mediator called JNK2, which has been implicated in presynaptic NMDA receptor mediated control of spontaneous release in the entorhinal cortex. In our study, we found that presynaptic NMDA receptors regulate evoked and spontaneous release through different, non overlapping mechanisms. To sustain high frequency evoked release, magnesium sensitive presynaptic NMDA receptors rely on RIM1 dependent conventional calcium signaling, but not on JNK2. In contrast, to regulate spontaneous release, presynaptic NMDA receptors depend on JNK2 but not on RIM1 or on magnesium, which suggests metabotropic signaling, that is, without the need for calcium. Although more work is required to tease apart the details of these two signaling cascades, our findings provide a solid foundation for future studies of unconventional NMDA receptor signaling. This is important for finding novel pharmacological treatments of neurological disorders. For the full story, please see our article in Neuron.